And then we have the P note announcements that came in. So without me trying to tell you what it means, let's get in a battery of experts to just try and uh, figure out if there is a material impact on the markets in the near or the medium term. <laughs> we, ha As I said, we have a ba battery of experts, but let me start off with Richie Sanchethi's Partner Investments Fund Practice Group at Nishit Desai Associates. Joins us right now on the show. Richie, thank you so much for joining in. Good morning. Your initial thought, Richie, because we've had divided opinion. Uh, the jury is out. Some people believe that a lot of participants were already complying with the major portion of the norms, and some people believe this will scare away a significant part of the FI community. Your thoughts? Sure. So I sort of agree with that community, which agrees that you know a uh, large part of the target audience, which was subscribing to ODIs and P notes, were already in compliance with some of the rules that uh, SEBI has just formalized as of now. So a bulk of the ODI subscriptions we see in the market is, uh, you know, sort of uh, by ETFs. Uh, who have been dealing with uh, swap dealers which are institutional in nature. And we see a lot of uniformity in how uh, the India side letters to the ODIs have been dealt with in the past. The ODI swap dealers, the issuers, etc., they have pretty much been engaging with SEBI on a very regular basis to sort of ensure that their, uh, the rules on, under which they are issuing the ODIs have been audited by SEBI. And, and a lot of what we saw, you know, coming out formally by SEBI yesterday uh, through its board meeting, etc., has been something that SEBI has already been, you know, sort of instructing the ODI issuers from time to time, either through informal meetings or through other channels. And accordingly, some of the key rules that sort of, uh, you know, uh, came out to the market yesterday, including the one on carrying out the KYC checks as per Indian regulations, and the second aspect of uh, sort of ensuring that any transfer of ODIs is, is ensured right. that, you know, you take prior approval of the issuer. Mm -hmm. All these aspects were something which uh, some of the institutional ODI issuers yeah. were already observing through their side letters. Right. Uh, Motilal Oswa also joins into the discussion with his perspective on this development. Uh, uh, great to have you, Mr. Oswal, uh, this Hi. morning. Uh, what's your own sense? Because, you know, it makes life harder not for the P note holder only, but also for the P note issue in terms of the disclosure norms. And also, if uh, a P note is transferred, uh, you know, in lieu of a, a sale or a transaction, that also requires uh, a permission uh, from the regulator uh, before such a transaction is uh, executed. Oh, I think it, it was required uh, because there were a lot of kind of, I think, I would say, concerns, not concerns, but perceptions that the whole you know, kind of, I think, uh, uh, route was really, I think, being missed by some of the people. And I, I don't think so that it was really been misused. Maybe, I think, it would be very few number of people who may not have been able to identify, uh, uh, I think, their own kind of, I think, identity before the regulators. So... Uh, I think it's, it's a very good move to bring the uh, transparency to the whole system. That would be my number one uh, kind of other point. Sec second thing is that your uh, concern about money laundering or uh, round tripping uh, or uh, uh, any other kind of other regulatory concerns about the unknown identities taking the positions. Uh, so all those concerns have been addressed. Uh, uh, I think market had fear that uh, if at all uh, the, the regulators uh, could... Uh, even do away with the instrument, but that has not happened. I think just, I would say it's just a minor kind of tricking in the guidelines to bring, uh, I think, identity uh, of, of the ultimate holders uh, to, to, to uh, I think, uh, the more transparency level. Hmm. Okay, so, uh, Mr. Oswal, I don't, from your answer, I presume you believe that this will not have a major impact on the markets. I, I don't think so. I, I don't think so, really. Okay. I, th I think Mr. Harish Salve is also with us. Uh, and Mr. Salve, I know you have a very busy morning, but I just wanted that one question from you. Uh, you know, how, how stringent would these norms be from an FI perspective for somebody who's wanting to invest? How stringent are these norms that have been announced? Uh, by saying Indian KYC norms, it opens up the route for Indian and banks and institutions to issue their own KYC. Otherwise, today what happens is a participatory note is being issued by, say, a New York institution. They may have their own KYC. We may be happy, we may not be happy with their KYC. So if you have to have a participatory instrument by which a person can participate in an investment in India, then you, it must satisfy Indian KYC norms. 
it's not enough that in, it is satisfying the jurisdictional uh, norms of the country where the note is being generated. Right. Um, even so, uh, I just want to get in a quick perspective uh, from the tax angle. Suresh, do you think that, uh, uh, you know, uh, these norms are pretty much on expected lines or, you know, there could have been some ease. I mean, I'm looking at uh, some of uh, the contours of the decision uh, announced. Uh, uh, are you satisfied? Asking from a tax perspective, probably nothing has changed. All that has happened is, I think it's a, this is a regulatory development. Uh, what uh, SEBI is really doing is it's uh, maybe uh, made the uh, norms a little bit more stringent. But uh, I don't think this is going to really uh, impact uh, uh, the ODI issuers from a tax perspective. I think what will really impact was uh, that the India-Mauritius Treaty was uh, renegotiated. And I think that will have some bearing as far as the tax impact is concerned, but not this particular development. Mm. Mr. Oswal, I have, uh, you know, uh, just to scratch that point that I'd raised earlier. Now, as part of uh, these new norms, you're saying that there should be no transfer of P notes without prior permission. And... You know, the moment you read that, your sense is that this would impact uh, liquidity and attractiveness because it's a bit of like saying, you know, every transaction you do, let us know, take our permission. Would, would, it, be, would it have been more prudent to put a threshold limit that only transactions uh, above 50 million or 100 million, uh, you know, uh, require permission? Uh, so that at least, you know, the uh, the quick transactions or the low uh, uh, profit transactions could happen uh, you know, on the, uh, within the jurisdiction of the investors? I think to keep the uh, thing simple rather than putting any kind of, I think, limit, I think it's, it's very simple. I don't think so it's a major kind of, I think, operational hassle or even compliance hassle on the part of the issuers to keep track uh, ultimate, who is the ultimate owner. To me, it looks like it is even better risk management even for the issuers so that they know. Uh, end of the day, the builders can always question them after a long time that who was the holder and why, how come really you didn't know all this kind of stuff. So I would say it's a better corporate governance. It's a better, uh, uh, I would say, compliance for even issuers. And I, I don't think any serious problem. In any case, the size of the whole market of uh, the, the ODI has also shrunk in a big way. Okay, so, well, well uh, having said that, Richie, so I think Mr. Oswal makes a very valid point and he sounds very, very sanguine about these. But my question to you is, from amongst the decisions that have been taken, uh, could there have been some more clarity on certain things or some relaxation on one or two norms that have been announced? Because there are five or six things that have been done. Uh, could have right. probably helped uh, the P-note investment route? Or do you think all of this at par and no need to worry? So I agree with uh, the summary that uh, we, we've, we've heard over the course of this discussion so far. I think uh, the key point, as Mr. Oswal also sort of pointed out, was the fact that as an issuer, it's, it's easier for the issuer to monitor as to who the end beneficiaries of an ODI are if, uh, you know, its uh, prior approval is sort of sought. And, and I believe that the issuers would not be withholding that approval unless there is a KYC red flag which sort of comes out. I think the only point which uh, there could have been some more clarity would have been around multi-class structures. Uh, all along, SEBI has been saying that it is uncomfortable with opaque structures where opaque structures are pretty much uh, intended to mean uh, protected cell companies and uh, other you know, structures which ring fence the liability uh, of, of one beneficial owner from that of the other. Uh, there has been some confusion in the market whether a multi-class structure which do not even ring fence the liabilities, at least not uh, from a legal perspective, would they be eligible to subscribe to ODIs? What sort of rules would come under that? The, the, the confusion persists. The language in the directions yesterday do not clarify on, on that regard at least. So yeah, there is a, a missed opportunity there. Mm. But gentlemen, the sum and substance of this discussion, you know, because it, it's such a deep issue that not too many people, not too many of our viewers also would be completely aware of it. But you gentlemen are aware of it and you believe it will not have a big impact. Mr. Oswal, I know it's a repeat question, but you don't think this has the capacity to dent the markets in a significant way? I, I actually think it is a positive development because okay. there were some fears uh, that things could be worse, but I think it's just a minor tweaking of the guidelines. So my sense is that it's a bit positive that the clarification has come that uh, P notes really uh, uh, will, the, the life about issuing the P notes will go on uh, with, I think, very minor kind of, I think, uh, correction. To me, it looks quite positive, not negative. The initial reading on the SGX Nifty goes, the markets are always very sensitive uh, to any market-related uh, uh, policy announcement. Uh, 
if there was anything that the market found untoward about this decision, you know, we could have seen a knee-jerk reaction. But the SGX Nifty is pointing towards a higher open this morning. Thanks very much, all of you, uh, for taking out the time to speak with us uh, and throwing more perspective on this uh, issue. We're calling it the P-note cleanup because that's what it is. Uh, as Mr. Oswal also pointed out, uh, the flows coming in via the P-note route, uh, route, essentially, the foreign flows coming in via the P-note route, uh, have shrunk uh, to 10%. Remember, at the peak of the market in 2007, the percentage of flows uh, coming in via this route stood at 50%. So either ways, with entry-related uh, norms easing, uh, it's much more easier for uh, foreign investors to access the Indian market. They really don't need the P-note route to come in, uh, and which is why perhaps, uh, you know, within uh, the kind of influences this uh, instrument uh, uh, exercises, uh, the regulator is trying to bring about, uh, you know, some about some amount of clarity as well as transparency in the process, and that's fair. Yeah, I'm. So maybe certain specific stocks could see a bit of a scare. You know, I'm sure there are a lot of these individual stocks yeah. that may get impacted over the that's course of time because of unwinding of positions. But suffice to say, the broader market implications, at least our experts say, not so. However. Uh, having having spoken about this P not scare and the global risk of that we've been talking about all morning. I mean, it's been 15 minutes into the show, let's or 20 minutes into the show actually. Let's try and now get in our battery of uh, trade experts.